You're listening to The Hour of the Time. I'm Pooh. And I'm William Cooper. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, my dear. You're welcome. Crazy people. Crazy people. Crazy people like me go crazy over people like you. Goofy people. Daffy people. Daffy people like me go crazy over the things you do. Why are we on the moon? The moon the bar. We've got the answer to fly from the moon. It must be the moon. Crazy people. Crazy people. Crazy people like me, go crazy over people like you. Ah, 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 it's an old, old custom of a house that keeps folks from drinking a pot. Now that's the reason they be that I call you baby. We're each other's kind of heart. Who do you feel? Oh, well, that's the kind of mood I'm in tonight. Just want to warn you up front. We put the paper to bed. Today, ladies and gentlemen, goes to press tomorrow, and you can start looking for it in the mail pretty soon. When it hits Washington, D.C., I have a feeling there's going to be this incredible silence, and then the lid's probably going to blow off of everything. <laughs> uh, and that's not even uh, <laughs> counting what's going to happen when it hits your mailbox and when your friends read it. It is incredible. It's probably the best issue that we've done. Uh, the article on the BATF IRS is probably... Well, it's not the, it's, uh, as far as writing goes, it's not the best thing I've ever written, but it's the, it's the best thing I've ever accomplished so far, um, I think. I'm very proud of it. And it's not just my work, it's work of people like Wayne Benson, and Larry B. Kraft, and many, many others over the years who have helped steer me in the right direction. You see, because at one time, folks, I was just like the rest of you. Not uh, awake, not aware. In fact, most of my life was wasted in sheer lunacy. I was as stupid as they come, as trusting as anybody could possibly be, as firmly entrenched in establishment mentality as you could possibly imagine. So for me to come this far is quite an accomplishment, and I'm pretty proud of that article. And I'm really proud of everybody who had anything, anything to do with it whatsoever uh, over all the years. Uh, Veritas, if you have not subscribed yet, is $55 for 24 issues. $55 for 24 issues. Make checks or money orders payable to Veritas and send them to Veritas. P.O. Box 3390, St. John's, Arizona, 85936. That's P.O. Box 3390, St. John's, Arizona, Eight five nine three six, um, and 
folks, if you're just now mailing your check for your subscription, you're not going to get issue number six. So if you want issue number six, include an extra five dollars and specify that you want issue number six, and we'll send it right off to you. Also, if we can get 500 orders for reprints of issue one, three, and four, that's issue one, three, and four, we're going to reprint 500 copies of each of those issues, but only if we get 500 orders of each of those back issues. Now, the way we're going to do it, we weren't ever going to do reprints of those issues before because they're collector's items, and we finally figured out how we can do it and not uh, degrade the value of the uh, issues that are in the hands of people who supported us when we started. They deserve to have that value. It's very simple. We're going to print the whole paper in one color, one ink, black. So for collectors, it will be obvious when you have the, the real McCoy, you'll have the masthead and Veritas in blue and the blue line at the bottom. And of course, issue number two, you'll have the big red headline busted. Uh, in all the copies, they'll just be black. So that's how we're going to do it, to preserve uh, your investment in, uh, in your collector's items and to, uh, to fulfill our promise that we would not degrade the value of those issues whatsoever. And uh, also to fulfill the need of all of those people who have been bombarding us with questions. I mean, no matter how many times I say it on the air, how many times we tell people it just doesn't make any difference. They want those issues so we finally figured out this way to satisfy that. So if you want a copy of those, send five dollars. We're not gonna we're not gonna do it if you just send us a letter and say, yeah, you'll pay us if we make the reprint. Uh uh. I don't play those silly games, folks. If you want it, send us five bucks. When we get five hundred orders for any one of those, we'll print it. When we get five hundred for the next one, we'll print it. When we get 500 for the next one, we'll reprint it. Right now we have, uh, uh, we have uh, back issues of number two and number five on hand. So if you would like a copy of those two issues, all back issues always are $5 postpaid. So if you'd like to have a copy of issue number one, issue number three, issue number four, Two and five are available right now. Um, send five dollars per back issue. Specify the one that you want. And remember, if you order one, three, or four, you probably won't get them for a while because we're going to wait until we get 500 orders. And there's a little ad in this issue of Veritas. There'll be a big display ad in the next issue of Veritas. If we don't get 500 orders within, say, uh, five uh, months, then we'll send you $5 back to you. So don't worry about it. We're not going to spend it. Uh, we'll either send you those issues that you want, or we'll send you money back to you. Also, don't forget the 12-hour uh, videotape set of the lecture, the presentation by the Oklahoma City Station Chief at our last conference in St. John's is available. It's $55 for members, $70, I believe, for uh, non-members. And uh, that's postpaid prices, folks. Um, make all checks or money orders out to Annie, A-N-N-I-E, for the Station Chief presentation videos. Numbers, 12 hours, VHS videotapes. And... Uh, Make your checks or money orders payable to Annie, A-N-N-I-E. Send them to the Intelligence Service, Post Office Box 1420, Sholo, Arizona, 85901. That's P.O. Box 1420, Sholo, Arizona, 85901. Also, we have, uh, <coughs> excuse me, folks, uh, we have our uh, FM radio transmitters. Now, people are calling me asking me the strangest things, and I'm not going to provide all this information, folks. If you're too lazy 
to do some digging and find out what you need to know for yourself, then you got no business getting involved in any of this stuff. I got people calling me wanting to know uh, <laughs> what the law is in their city regarding FM radio broadcast. I don't know. I don't care. If I move there, I'll find out for myself. Unless I can find you, then I'll call you, because by that time, you should have got it in your head to find out for yourself, because you live there. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, I wish some of you could sit and answer some of the phone calls that I get. I mean, some of them are right to the point. They're good calls. They're good questions. They're good people. But some of them are... Um, so far out there that uh, I wish I hadn't even picked up the receiver sometimes, folks. It's incredible. How would I know what the law is in Pocatello, Idaho, about FM transmitters? You know, and a lot of other things. You know, most of you could find out what you need to know just by a short trip to your own library. But you're so lazy... You won't even get off your butt and go to your own library. you got to call me to tell you something that there's no reason that I should even know it in the first place. Because I don't live there. And I'm involved in a lot of other things. You see, I'm trying to deal with this big picture, folks. The only reason we're offering these radio transmitters to you, we thought you might like to participate in spreading the word and educating the American people and trying to wake up a consensus of the sheeple to make them real people so that no blood has to be shed in this country. You know? And I'm no different from any of you out there. The only difference is I do, some of you do, most of you don't, have never, and probably never will. And all you got to do is just do something, anything. <laughs> well, tonight I'm going to open the phones. Let me give you the number, because it's not the number that you're used to calling. And don't bother faxing anything to the research center, because we're having some terrible phone problems there, and the fax is not working. In fact, we had so many problems with that line, we had to cancel that line. Uh, at the center, 520-337-2562 is the center number. If you want to call Veritas, it's 520-337-2878. If you want to call in and talk uh, tonight, it's 520-333-4578. That's 520-333-4578. Seven, eight. And we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. Okay? I think that might be fun. You never know. So, if you want to call in tonight, you know what? I don't think that's right. In fact, I know that's not right. And uh, if you'll hang on, I'm going to fix it, folks, which means i got to go off the air for about a half a minute. And uh, we'll be right back. Don't go away. And we're back. How's that for quick? <laughs> okay. If you want to call in, the number is 520-333-4578. Take your comments on the air. Uh, we're not used to this phone system here, so it takes a little doing to get everything right and i haven't taken call-ins on this line in a long long time folks good evening you're on the air hey mr cooper how you doing it's paul from brooklyn good how's everything wonderful oh listen i want a couple of things i wanted to talk to you about one thing i was listening to the radio today and while i was driving my car and they were talking about nafta and pretty much everything you predicted and what we all thought that we all thought was going to happen pretty much happened they uh all of the jobs that were supposed to happen, they did labor searches. And this is the Communist News Network actually doing these examinations. And they found that all the jobs pretty much left America. And uh, no jobs pretty much came, no jobs came here, of course. And in addition to that, the Mexican economy 
as an aside, is four times worse than it was before NAFTA, so everybody's getting screwed. Sure, they had to collapse the uh, Mexican economy to make sure that the businesses that moved into Mexico have the most dirt-cheap labor that they can possibly find. NAFTA, like Anthony J. Hiller says, is the shafta. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, I mean, not that, not that it's any surprise, of course, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty wild to see the news networks actually being somewhat, uh, somewhat revealing on these topics. Well, they can't let it be a total shock to people. You see, if, if they let you know over a period of time little bits and pieces, then it's not a shock. Nobody comes unglued. Uh, they don't rise up and, uh, and uh, uh, arrest and uh, try and hang the Communist News Network and the rest of the, the treasonous scum. That... <laughs> well, don't, don't hold anything back. How do you really care? <laughs> <laughs> well, I never have held anything back, and I'm not going to. No, I'm just kidding. Um, listen, I got a, I got a, I got a really dumb question for you. Actually, did anything that you could see? Because I didn't see anything, and maybe I'm just missing this whole big, big picture. Did anything good at all come out of the Waco, Texas hearing? Oh uh, yes, there were a, f a few good things that came out of it. Um, you, you had to watch the whole hearings to to discover what it was, but. Uh, basically, uh, they were wrong. They admitted that they were wrong. They admitted everything that we've been saying here. And uh, every time that they would admit something, somehow they would bring some other uh, witness up that would uh, try and soften that or negate it. Right. And then you had people like Schumer who would go into these long uh, diatribes about how the NRA was uh, providing the evidence and disrupting the... Uh, the legitimacy of the hearings and all this bullshit. Yeah, so that, that's pretty much, you know, because that's most of what I caught. You know, I mean, people seem to be there. Anyway, it doesn't matter because people seem to be more interested in OJ anyway. I mean, you know, I had somebody come up to me and throw a name at me the other day. I don't remember what the name was. And they were talking to me like I was some kind of idiot because I didn't know who this name was. And I'm like, and, and they're like, well, you don't know? And then uh, the only thing I say, well, don't tell me. It's something from the OJ trial. Well, you know, of course it was. <laughs> You know, some, some Cato Keelan character or some nonsense, I don't know. Let and me it, ask you something. Have you ever tried to kill two people with one knife? Um, well, I guess after cleaning it. No, <laughs> no, actually, I never have. Two big, healthy, physically fit adults? No, never have. Well, think about it for a while. O.J. didn't do it. If, if he did, he didn't do it by himself. I never thought, actually, I, I, I never thought of that. Wow. That, that's, pretty, that's pretty wild. Um, oh, you know, I got a question for you. Did you, um, that, that bird, did you ever receive it? Oh, yeah, we did. It's, it, that's uh, fantastic. It flies nice, right? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad you liked it. And Pooh likes it and everything. And Pooh loves it. I got, I'm, gonna, I'm sending another one off to you because guess what color I have? They, they just sent them from France. We got red, white, and blue now. And oh. I, I thought of it, and it came like two days after I shipped yours out. I was like, oh, man. Hey, but wonderful. waited two days, I would have... Uh... Oh, these things are incredible. I couldn't believe it. I got it. I looked at it. I said, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> was that your first reaction? Yeah, well, no. I saw them flying. I was like, what the heck is that? And I walked yeah. over to them. There's some guy in Chinatown, and he's flying the, the, the dark things around. And I couldn't believe it. And I bought two of them, and I was like, oh, you know, I, I, you know, because I was looking for something to do that I can work my way through school with. Because that's pretty much really why I do it. Not, you know, I'm not trying to make a. Well, this thing is great. Pooh and I have great fun with it, and it's it flies for a long, long distance. In fact, if we didn't have Sugar Bear to go find it for us, <laughs> we probably would have lost it about 500 times by now. It flies exactly like a bird, and you never would believe this. Old Leonardo da Vinci was absolutely correct. Yep. 500 years ago, when they laughed at him, he was, like, he was what, a heretic, right, I think? <laughs> yeah, and, and a lot of other things. <laughs> but it's, it's the way it always is, don't go. I mean, whoever, it's like you, okay? I, I hear these things, and I, I didn't even know you were famous, to be honest with you. When I first started listening to your broadcast, I just thought you were just an intelligent guy out of Tucson, Arizona, right? But, lo, lo and behold, as I start, you know, talking to people, and they say, well, where are you getting all this information from? I said, well, I do my own research, but uh, the person who really started me on, on getting interested in researching it myself was a guy named Bill Cooper. Oh. Oh, you look at that guy. You look at Oh, he's a lunatic. He's a white supremacist. <laughs> what are you talking about, white supremacist? I said, you know, that's the very last thing you talk about. You know, it's, it's you know, I, I know a white supremacist when I talk to one. <laughs> I mean, not only are you not a white supremacist, you're not an anything supremacist. You know, you go out of your way to talk about how every, you know, everybody should be equal as long as they're thinking, intelligent people and, and, and at least have some semblances of desire for the truth. That's right. 
And uh, my wife knows the white supremacist when she sees one, too. I would imagine she would. <laughs> I imagine she'd be very sensitive. Well, I finally finished your book, by the way, and I just turned it, turned, pretty much turned it over and starting it again because that was way too much to digest in one sitting. Yeah, it's an awful lot. It's a shocker, and I did it that way intentionally to get people's attention, and uh, uh, it, it does. Don't loan it to anybody. You'll never get it back. No, no. In fact, I, I think I told you this uh, one, of the, one of the other times I had spoken to you, but do you know that your book is actually the most... Well, it's a weird statistic. The most stolen book in Barnes and Noble. They actually had to take this book off the shelf and put it in the back because people were taking it, putting it in, putting it in their, uh, you know, in their pockets and walking out with them. Oh, I don't know. They do that because it's a pretty thick book. Yeah, I know. The first two years they wouldn't touch it with a ten foot pole, and when they saw how well it was selling, yeah, uh, they they just put it out. They bought it and put it on the shelves, and there were so many of them stolen that now they put them in the back, and you have to yeah. ask for it. And now people say that they're trying to hide the book, and it's not true. Right? No, exactly. <laughs> you know, what, you know, what, you know what I'm curious about. One of the things that um, that I wasn't uh, 100% sure when when I'm talking to people, right? It's really, and like a guy like my father, one of the most intelligent people I know is my dad, and yet I have to call him a sheeple. You know, because he doesn't care about any of I, I sit there, we will have, uh, at least he listens to me. He doesn't, like, throw me out of the car or anything. You, you know why he doesn't care? Because he either has a job and a good check, or, or else he had a job, and he, now he has a nice, comfortable retirement, uh, and, and he has a car, and he has a TV, and he has uh, good meals, and uh, he's not going to worry about any of it until it begins to affect those things. Well, he said something very profound to me when I was telling him all this. He says, well, you know, you're hard-pressed to find a revolutionary with a full stomach. And I thought about that, and actually that was uh, kind of, in a sense, true. But the thing about it is he's got a small business that's failing somewhat. He's not really doing particularly well, and he's looking ahead into his retirement years as, as possibly being maybe bankrupt. Yeah. The thing about it is, is that, and I talk to him, and he agrees with all of this stuff. I tell him, I said, you know, I, I bring, I, I show him proof. I talk to him about Waco, Texas, and all, and Randy Weaver, and he says, what? And his reaction is, when I told him about Randy Weaver, his, his reaction is, well, that surprises you. Our government is corrupt. I says, yes, and don't you think we should do something about it? Well, no, not armed resistance. But what did they do 200 years ago? I mean, did you realize, you know, a lot of people don't realize this, and I, I know I'm taking up a lot of time, but a lot of people don't realize this, but 200 years ago, when we fought the American Revolutionary War, wasn't, weren't we fighting the government? I mean, wasn't, did, didn't the government of the crown at that time put out propaganda saying that the militias were a bunch of right-wing supremacists and, I mean, right, uh, right-wing radicals, or whatever the equivalent terms were back then? Exactly. They were terrorists, they were traitors, they were rebels. Uh, they were uh, they, they were called every name in the book, just like patriots are today. And and I got to tell you something: people were better off back then than they are today. I agree. Now we have more modern conveniences, and we have indoor plumbing, and we have things hey. like stereos, but they were better off. I got news to you. I think well, that's not news to you, obviously, but for a lot of people out there, I think that's exactly why this this crap is going to work, uh, or, or, or or this crap is being so successfully perpetrated on us because people, even the lowest income people, even people that are homeless have access to television, they have access to heat, they have access to all the modern conveniences, to so much so that life has become so comfortable that I, I really firmly believe that that's how this stuff is working so well because people are not, that they've become soft. All they want is their MTV. They nothing, want... nothing has changed. And back in, the, in what they called the Great Depression, because they wanted the people to think there was a, a terrible time in this country, yeah. and there really wasn't, they called the homeless hobos. Right. They called the missions soup lines and soup kitchens. They're still here. Exactly. The homeless people are still here. But the homeless have... are still here. Yeah, they still got soup lines and soup kitchens, and, and they still got people out of work, only they got a lot more out right now than they did during the Depression. Wow, that I didn't know. There's a lot more failed farms now than there yeah, ever was in the Depression. Yeah, but I think that's gone on purpose. I mean, look at all the laws. And, I mean, sure it is. They're going bankrupt because they can't stay in business anymore because, you know, so, so the less food there is, they, they, it makes more sense that, they, that the conditions can be proven to be worse. You said something great that the other day. I hate it. I was so, I, I played it back five times. That the time is ripe for somebody with the, how did you put it, with the, ability to solve the problems and the political savvy to come along and be a dictator. That's right. Because what's, what's happening is this government is making problems that they are going to be the ones that are going to solve. And whoever does this is going to be ele ele elevated to the political status. Of oh, no, it's the millennium. Whoever does it is going to be the messiah. 
Oh, man, you know, I... He's going to be a religious and political charismatic leader who will mount the throne of the world. You watch. Oh, man, that, 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 that's unreal. But, I mean, I thank God for your show because, I mean, I'm learning so much listening to you. And I really, really appreciate that you, that you opened the phone lines and let us, you know, let us talk to you like this. But I'm going to let you go because I'm sure that everybody's pressing their redial, uh, their redial button over and over and over again. That's okay. Anybody that can send me a phony bird that really flies can talk as long as he wants. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have another one off that big red, white, and blue one off to you uh, Great. in a couple of days. Great. Okay, thanks, Bill. Thank you. Thanks so much for the broadcast. <laughs> You're on the air. Hi there, Bill. How are you doing? Good. Turn down the radio. I'm a blind person. I called you at first. So it's hard to get through. You don't take a lot of calls. And a couple of weeks you were mad when you were getting crazy calls. But that's the way it is. You know, you have to be patient. You can't lose your cool. <laughs> no, we found out who it was. Phone records tell everything. Yeah, but those people happen. You know, you, you have to do that. And... You know, in business, you know, you can't lose it because, you know, you're on the radio. You need, you, you need to turn your radio off. Yeah, not okay, I'm turning the volume down there completely, yeah. Uh, I'm a blind person in Massachusetts, and I pretty much have given up on this country. My name is Joe, by the way. I told you briefly that I had one legal problem with the law, and I heard Ivy, and it's the only thing I did. I do come from an abused background, but I understand how you feel about the guy at Tiananmen Square, that he is your hero, but... What upsets me, and it's not your fault, a lot of the patriots want everyone to do this and do that, but a lot of us need help. We're in a worse situation. Like Mr. Collins, I'm sure you've heard of him. He wants to be president. He's going to roll back the IRS, which I agree. But <laughs> He's going to try, and he's going to get shot. Oh, absolutely. Of course he's going to get killed. Cause this, and, and he's gonna, if he gets elected. Yeah, he's going to get rid of the CIA. He's going to get rid of this. Maybe a lot of these IRS... Uh, like Ivy said, we can't pay the tax. She isn't paying the taxes because uh, she's proved a fraud organization. But you have to look at it from my uh, view, too. You take care of your daughter, Pooh, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we were physically and mentally abused. And not. I'm not saying that a kid has sexually abused like you hear about these sex abuse cases. We had one here in Boston, the person's out of jail. They had to fight like hell because of all the programming, improper therapy. But all I get is a government check. I get no help from anywhere, Mr. Cooper. And, you know, I understand that 200 years ago the churches did this, but things are different now. This is a whole new different world we're living in. You see what I'm saying? Uh, no, I would disagree with you. You see, uh, there are a lot of people out there who have one leg who get a check and don't do anything. Yeah. I have one leg, and I'm doing things that uh, everybody else says that they could never do and said I could never do. You're blind, and I'm telling you, you can do the same thing. Yeah, but I need uh, special equipment and help. From, and people don't help people today. They're told not to get involved. There are five million jobs where people are looking for somebody just to answer the phone and talk. Yeah, but that's that's not the answer for every blind person, just sitting there and answer the phone. You know it, and I know it. I didn't say that was the answer for every oh. blind person, but it's better than collecting a check and doing nothing is what I'm trying to say. Okay. okay. But now here's the other story. When they start paying you, they will start deducting from your check. If let's say they pay me three or five bucks an hour. It depends upon whether or not you let them. They have no right to deduct anything from your check. Well, that's the government. See, I don't have... No, it's not the government. I'm talking about your employer. Your employer cannot deduct anything from your check what I mean is, unless you fill out the paperwork and give him permission to do it. And even if you do, he doesn't have the proper appointment from the government to collect taxes from you. It requires a specific form that he has to have hanging on his wall that says he is the agent that does the withholding for the federal government. Okay. I, I understand it, but you and I know that... I mean, I'm uh, totally alone, okay, and I and if I get, let's just say I got a job, okay, they would pay me, I get 600 a month, uh, the government would would start deducting, not my employer, I should say, the government would start deducting, let's say they pay me three or four bucks an hour, they would deduct a couple of that, some of that money, but we figured it out, you have to make twice as much to make ends meet, and of course, I would lose my Section 8, which is okay, because I'm on Section 8, and I'm not a bum, and I don't drink, and all this stuff, you know. It's had a rough road. And if I ever lost the job, I wouldn't be able to get back on Section 8 again. I'm just saying that 
we have to have a system, and as bad as it is, and I agree with you in a lot of your things, it's bad. We have to have a system to help people. Uh, but the system to help people has always been in place in this country, but it's being taken away from us and being allotted to the federal government where it doesn't belong. Communities and cities and counties and states have always taken care of the needy in this country. Well, I I wish they did, but when I was little, knocked around, no one would get involved, Mr. Cooper. I can't blame you for your... Well, maybe no one was getting involved because maybe nobody knew what was going on. Yes, they did. Neighbors knew uh, my parents and what was happening, and no one would get involved. You couldn't tell anybody. And as I got older, I developed a learning disability. And uh, up here, people stay to themselves unless you're very popular or you have quite a bit of money. And, like, a lot of this stuff, research you do... Well, now, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, when, when did this happen? What? The uh, abuse? Whatever you're talking about. The, the it started when I was a small child. Right? When? 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 What years? No, uh, I'm 48. Yeah, now it's. I guess it started in. I was born 47, around 58 or 60, and I went to school, a blind school, and uh, my whole family's been broken up. I'm now up here. I've been up uh -huh. here for 20 years. And do you think the same thing doesn't happen today with the federal government in charge? I think it does. But I think it happens more. What do you mean? But you see, I think it happens more. But you have, I think not only does it happen more, but families are broken up that should have been broken up. For instance, there was a woman who disciplined her child in a store. Mm -hmm. The child was screaming bloody murder, disrupting everybody. Uh, the store couldn't even operate in peace, and she swatted the kid on the butt. Okay. She was arrested and thrown in jail. The kid was taken away from her. The kid now is having nightmares and going to psychological treatment therapy sessions because he feels like he's yeah. the one who destroyed the family. Okay, I agree with you. That's totally exaggerated. One swat isn't, isn't going to hurt a kid, okay? Two swats won't hurt a kid. Yeah, but I am against <laughs> hitting, and you understand that I've been hit a great deal. Yeah, but let me tell you something, and you're not going to like this, and I'm going to let you go right now because I think, my friend, that you are a professional victim, and I think you like it because you're not looking for solutions to your problem. You're, well, not, looking for a, you're not looking for a way to support yourself and earn a living. You're justifying why you should be drawing a check. And I don't care if you're blind. I don't care if you've got two heads. I don't care if you've got one leg or no legs or no legs and no arms. There's something that you can do to be productive. And uh, that's where I stand. That's where I will always stand. And I will never back down from that, folks, because I know all about this stuff. i got one leg. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Mr. Cooper. Yes. Um, I sent you a information package several months ago regarding... Uh, Roe uh, Raymond Wright and his electronic cure for cancer, invention of the microscope and so on. I'm wondering if you reviewed that and if you have any comments on it. I talked about that almost four years ago in this broadcast. Roe Wright microscope, yeah, and his uh, ability to destroy um, uh, microbes with uh, radio frequency waves. That's the one. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering, do you think that part of the reason that this kind of uh, treatment is suppressed is, and other alternative cures for various diseases because it would uh, raise the surplus population of useless eaters, so-called useless eaters? Well, number one, I'm not sure that his treatment really works because I've never seen it work. doesn't mean that it doesn't. I just want everybody to know that because we're talking about this does not mean that I endorse it. I don't know if it works or not. I know the microscope works because I've seen the microscope and I've seen it work. And you can see things with that microscope you can't see with any other microscope in the world, bar none. I don't care. Did you see it? Oh, you, you've seen the microscope. Did you see it uh, with John Crane or, or another uh, I, of the microscope? I don't remember. It doesn't matter who. It was at one of these seminars that I frequently speak at, and somebody had one there, and I was able to uh, use it and look at it. And uh, it's an incredible microscope. But whether or not you can kill germs by the use of radio frequency waves, by tuning to the vibration frequency of whatever microbe you're trying to kill, I don't know. And so I don't want anybody out there to think that I'm endorsing that kind of thing because I just don't know. I will tell you this. There's a big interest in the, in the powers that be and in the big drug companies and the medical community not to allow these alternative treatments to exist or for people to take vitamins and be healthy because when you do that, they lose money. You think it's, it's just about the money? 
I think most of the world, 99% of the time, is just about the money. Because people are inherently selfish. They spend most of their time getting in a position where they can take advantage of other people and make as much money as they can and have the best life that they can. That's human nature. That's why imperfect men should not be allowed to rule imperfect men without checks and balances and controls and watchdogs put upon them. But that's what you would call the AMA, a check, or the FDA, a checks and balances and watchdogs. No. The root of no, 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 no. It would be if the officials appointed to run the FDA were made up of the people out here on a random basis, but they're not. They're appointed from the very communities and the very industries that they are supposed to be regulating. They have an interest a selfish interest in perpetrating or, or promoting and, uh, and maintaining the status quo. And they are in the position to do that, too, sitting on the boards of these uh, corporations. Absolutely. When it's looked at, I'll... I'll uh, Absolutely. Why do you think, do you think the FDA re is really interested in policing the drug industry when most of the people in the executive positions of the FDA came from the drug industry and will go back to the drug industry when they leave government? I think if this is one of, one of those issues that if more people knew more about it, they would be outraged enough to do something about it because it's something that uh, I think all of us would like as an extension in our life, and it no, seems to be what the AMA it's like the previous, is denying us. It's like the previous caller's father, and it's like my father. They've got theirs. They don't give a damn. Yeah, but you see the AMA and the FDA uh, director heads uh, dying of the same diseases that uh, sheeple and useless eaters do. Hey, it's like you said, it's hard to get people riled up when they got a chicken in their pot. <laughs> but you see them beating a line to alternative, uh, be beating a path to alternative therapies uh, should they uh, get some kind of cancer or, or whatnot. Some people, yes. Well, it's, it's been documented. But it's a pleasure speaking with you. Well, I'm glad you called. Well, okay, maybe I'll call again. It's not often you get uh, call-in shows, and I look forward to them. I get a busy signal most of the time, though. Well, most of the time we don't take call-ins. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> well, have a good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Oh, boy. Well, folks, let's uh, do some more of this here. Shoot me the fire and I'll pour me a shot. The cup, the cup, the cup, the cup, the cup. Oh, slip me a slug from that wonderful mug. I'll cut a rug just like a slug in a jug. You know, I remember hearing that when I was a kid. And when I was a kid, I remember my mom would give me a quarter to go to the movie on Saturday morning. Now, let me tell you something. Going to the movie on Saturday morning is not like going to the movie on Saturday today. First place, you can't find a movie open on Saturday morning anywhere today that I know of. There might be one in some city somewhere around the country that still caters to kids on Saturday. But it was a big deal. When I was a kid, you got a quarter from your mom and you went to the movie Saturday morning and you stayed all day. And you didn't just see a double feature. You saw cartoons, a whole bunch of cartoons. And you saw the serials. And you saw two or three or four movies, full feature-length movies. And you stayed there all day. And all it cost was the quarter would pay to get into the movie we'd pay for popcorn, and we'd pay for your Cokes. And it was a wonderful, fabulous way to spend a Saturday when I was a kid. We didn't do it every Saturday, but we did it often enough that I still remember it. And it was a wonderful, wonderful time. Now, I challenge any of you out there, anywhere in this listening audience, to tell me anything of any equivalent value that you can even approach for a quarter or even ten dollars. You know why we could do that then? Because our money was real money. A quarter was really silver. It really had worth. It had value. In fact, the dollar was the standard that the rest of the world based the value of their money or their none money upon. When you went to a foreign country, people would rather have a dollar than their own money. 
And I traveled all over the world as a kid with my father and then later in the military. And I never changed my dollars into foreign money ever because I could get more by spending my own money. Now, at that time, I didn't know that when I spent a dollar overseas that it was eventually exchanged and take the gold out of this country because I was a sheeple like the rest of you. But what I'm trying to demonstrate is what's happened to our money. You can't even go see one movie <laughs> anywhere for a quarter. Now, I know some places where on special occasions, maybe in some run-down theater in some seedy part of town, you can go watch a movie for a buck. But usually, it's going to cost you three, four, five, six, seven, eight dollars just to see one movie. And whether it's three dollars or eight dollars just depends on the part of town you're in when you go to the movie. That's it. Now, if you'd like to get your hands on some of this real money, if you'd like to feel it, see, you just and it's worth it, folks. It's worth 500 bucks for a gold coin just to feel it. Believe me, I've got some. I know. Call 1-800-289-2646. Do it now. You'll be glad that you did. 1-800-289-2646. Get your hands on some real money, real silver, real gold. Feel it. Feel how heavy it is. Look at it. Watch it after three or four weeks and see whether or not it tarnishes and how much. And then... Show it to other people and look at the glint in their eyes and you'll see the difference between what you normally deal with and what I used to spend to go to the movie on Saturday morning. When you're out on the range and your stomach screams, a smart fella gobbles the beans. Jeans, pork and beans. If you come and start to rumble, well, you know what that means. It's time to gobble some beans. Jeans, pork and beans. Good evening. You're on the air. Whistle us a tune. Hey, Bill. How you doing? Good. Um, I got a comment and a question. My comment is, uh, I know sometimes... Uh, you, you sound like you get awfully frustrated at the sheeple if they're not waking up, but believe me, Bill. You're well, really you, you haven't. You have no idea how frustrated I get sometimes, and you have no idea how sheeple some people can actually be. Oh, I, I, I know. Uh, I'm starting to uh, do a lot of uh, my own awakening up, and I'm trying to wake up other people. And when you show them facts, like you show people facts, and they look at you and they rend you and they laugh at you, it, it is extremely frustrating. But keep up the good. Uh, the good fight, and uh, you know, don't let no one ever tell you any differently because you definitely motivated my butt to do a lot of researching and what's happened up here in Canada as far as concentration camps and slave labor and whatnot. And it's all documented, it's all there, just for the people to go look at. Um, my, my question was is you, you occasionally make reference to uh, uh, the collapse of the uh, financial banking system and the economy. Uh, you don't have any timetable when that may occur, or you're how, how much in the future could you keep sort of... Uh... No, I'm not a wizard. I don't have any crystal ball. I don't have uh, any, any knowledge other than what I gain from my research and occasionally what somebody uh, deigns to tell me who actually has the knowledge. And no, I don't know. I just know it will happen. It will, yeah. It's like it's sort of a frustrating thing because uh, you read books like... Uh... Well, it, it has to happen. I mean, the, the world government is going to be socialist. Yeah, well, yeah. New World Order is definitely... Uh... A thing that, that I find uh, fascinating because it's so out in the open, and, and you've made it very plain to people that it's there in government documents. It's all over the internet, and yet people like Leslie Stahl from 60 Minutes will sit there and look at someone and go, "What's the New World Order? I've never heard of it." <laughs> <laughs> Leslie Airhead Stahl, you mean? It's it's really insane. But uh, you know, my my point is, I'm from I'm calling from Canada, as I said, and uh, up here it's far worse than it is in the states. And if every listener out there could hear me as a Canadian. In Canada, I cannot have an answering machine that says political messages. It is against the law in Canada to do that, and people have gone to jail because of it. Yeah, it, just, uh, just, a, just a little humorous sarcasm you can go to jail for. Yeah, in fact, uh, a guy I know in Vancouver made a comment about homosexuals in tongue-in-cheek about what the, the uh, 
Celtics used to do to them, and uh, he was going to be put in jail for it. He was brought up in front of a politically appointed tribunal, and they were going to put him in jail for it. That's how bad things are up there in Canada. So my um, suggestion to a lot of the American listeners is to uh, do as Bill says, and, and we got to all, all wake people up and get off our butts and research it and tell people, stand up like a, a trumpet and blow the horn, as it says in the Bible, to do, because... Uh, this, this is going to happen. It's no doubt about it. You know, this new world order thing is really a scary thing, but I, I want to thank you again, Bill, from the bottom of my heart as a Canadian listener and as a comrade, I guess, in the sense that we we're both want one thing, and that's peace for the whole entire world. No bloodshed, just, just peace for everybody and to be left alone. That's right. Those are my sentiments exactly. Thank you very much. Now, the number, for those of you who may have forgotten it or never wrote it down or never knew it or never heard it, are just tuned in is 520-333-4578. And I'm sorry, I had to go off the air a while ago to make the number work. But like I said, uh, you know, we haven't been broadcasting from this place for very long, and uh, we're not used to the phone hookup system. Good evening, you're on the air. Good evening, Bill. This is Gary from Wyoming. Hi, Gary. Yeah, I'd just like to agree with uh, your last caller there about... Uh, going and getting the facts for yourself. Uh, we've been blessed with a federal depository library in Gillette, Wyoming. And I've been going over there and researching some documents and stuff and just touching the tip of the iceberg. But uh, like you say, there's a lot of stuff there. Yeah, it's all there. It's all out in the open. Every single bit of it, nothing, absolutely nothing is hidden. It may have started out as a conspiracy a long, long time ago, but it certainly isn't now. Yeah, I found when researching uh, some of these things uh, while I was looking up civil disturbances uh, rather than the Rex 84 or a garden plot uh, project I looked up civil disturbances and found some interesting documents on that uh -huh. and if you know just what phrases to look up on the uh, computer uh, system that they use it's there oh yeah but uh, just wanted to call them Thank you again for your program and waking up some of the people out there. And uh, You're welcome. Know that you're appreciated in this area. Well, thank hey. you. Thank you for calling. Now, don't forget, folks, if you want to order the uh, FM transmitter, the kit is uh, $100 postpaid. The fully assembled and tested model with the one-half-wave dipole antenna is $150 postpaid. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Bill. Would you relieve a little bit of frustration, please, and tell us how we could get our own bird from Phil in New York? Well, I don't really know. <laughs> he just said it I've wondered one ever since I first uh, heard him uh, uh, tell you about it uh, some time ago. When uh -oh, it is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. You've seen the old um, drawings of Leonardo da Vinci's uh, wings that a man would put on and flap and fly like a bird. And, I don't recall. And he would put the, you know, the feathers on his feet. Well, that's exactly what this looks like, only it looks like a bird instead of a man. And uh, it's, it's, it's wings, just like a bird, that you wind up this rubber band and they flap up and down. Uh, only only thing is, you would think that this thing would, uh, you know, go a couple of feet and then bury itself in the ground. But it doesn't. It flies exactly like a bird. It looks exactly like a bird. And it goes so far that our dog Sugar Bear um, chases it and finds it for us because we would never find it. Well, could you possibly, if he calls back in sometime, could you possibly make his uh, uh, address or telephone number or something available to you listeners? Who sure. In fact, I'm going to ask him right now. I know he's listening to uh, give me a call, and um, we'll set something up because I know you guys would probably like to have him. I think that... Uh, he could probably uh, get enough and uh, make them available to everybody at some kind of a reasonable cost. I, I know he can't afford to buy them and give them to everybody, but um, it, I'll tell you, they're great. It's, it's wonderful. It, it's a lot of fun. And you can uh, play with the uh, position of the tail and make it go in circles or go up and uh, all kinds of different things. And it's, uh, it's, it's educational and it's a lot of fun. Sounds like something might be good to give away at, uh, uh, to buy and give away at uh, uh, political gatherings. <laughs> Get some uh, might be. campaign stickers printed up to go on them. Well, it's possible. Yeah, it's, anyway. uh, it's a lot of fun and it really works. And you'd never, you'd never believe it. I'd sure like to see one. Th thank you, then, kindly. You're welcome. Good night.
come touch them. Here come touch them. Time for you to step into a beautiful new life. Good evening, you're on the air. Hey, Bo, how you doing? Welcome to the Hudson Hour. <laughs> it's amazing talking to you tonight. Uh, me and my buddy were just sitting around tonight. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit on the uh, the alien on Fox broadcasting tonight. The what? The alien autopsy. The alien, it's fraud. Pardon me? Total fraud. Total fraud, that's what I figured. Uh, Total fake Just wondering, you know, they're really trying to say that the... Uh, well, if you could just talk about it, we're trying to say that the film is actually like 40 years old and so forth. Well, it's not 40 years old. No. It's supposed to be an uh, old film, right? Right. Well, Kodak should be able to tell you exactly who made it and uh, when it was made and what kind of emulsion was used and everything, shouldn't they? Sure. And why won't they? Uh, well, maybe they haven't had the opportunity yet. Well, give me a piece of the film. I have a degree in photography. I'll tell you real quick, but they won't do that. It's a fake Clear-cut fake. All uh, right. Well, uh, do you believe in UFOs or extraterrestrials? Or? A UFO is an unidentified flying object, and I've probably seen a million things in the sky I could not identify. All right. So uh, you put real no, no emphasis on it right now until uh, something comes. Oh, I put a lot of emphasis on it. If you read my book, you know I do. Uh, I, no, I, actually, can I get your book in a bookstore or what? No, you can order it from us for $30. 30 bucks. Which one is it? Behold a Pale Horse. Yeah, I've heard of it. I've heard a lot about it. Um, you see, it's interesting. It, so what do you, have you seen the footage? Yeah, I've seen the footage. Uh, it's what fake. do you think? Uh, it's it's fraud. Gonna, well, it's obviously going to have an effect on our uh, on our nation. No, it's not. You don't think so? No. It's going to have an effect on a bunch of woo-woo people in the UFO uh, Looney Tunes groups. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna really have a great, great fun with it, but uh, most people are going to shine it on. And it and it's eventually going to be proven to be a fraud beyond any shadow of a doubt. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. But I just think, uh, I don't know, someone's trying to prep uh, the world for something. Absolutely. What better way to unite all humanity in one world government and do away with wars between humans forever? Well, if we were planet. just attacked by some other species from some other planet, wouldn't we all come together in our common unity under a one-world government and make the sacrifices that were needed to meet this threat from outer space? Right. Well, that's uh, that's what I'm saying. That this, uh, I can understand why you say it's a fraud, but uh, I'm sure that there's so much emphasis placed upon this, this film to make it as authentic as possible. But I think it's going to be impossible to be identified as a fraud. Did you ever see Star Wars? Uh, yes, of course. If, if if you didn't have the scientific means to do it, could you prove any of that to be a fraud? Oh, well, you know, there are certain things that, uh, well, if I didn't have the means to do it, I could understand how some of the things could be done if, uh, if I understand, like, the basics of... Uh, give me five. Uh, give me $5,000 in a movie studio... And just let me walk around Hollywood and find some of these special effects and wannabes, and I'll make a better one than that. Right. Well, let's see. I haven't seen all the footage, and I understand there's some uh, some pictures of a crash saucer or some exterior shots of us uh, of this event. Total baloney. Total baloney. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure that anything that uh, that is act actually might be out there is much more hideous than uh, would be allowed. Why does it have to be hideous? <laughs> I'm just saying that uh, but what why? my belief is that if there are any extraterrestrials or other intelligence, that it might be uh, more of a demonic nature. Well, now you're getting into religion, and that, that's, uh, you know, you can't, that's... Too convoluted a subject? No, it's not convoluted. It's based upon your personal belief system. Sure has no foundation in in fact that religion is based upon belief faith right you can have faith that ufos are piloted by demons if you want to but it's a religion it's not a scientific fact huh. well it's an interesting topic and uh well i'll let you go on sure there's other callers behind me i just wanted to bring that up tonight okay thank Bye. you for calling good night good night 520-333-4578. Yeah, folks, don't you know when all this stuff happened? It was right after the dropping of the atomic bomb, the formation of the United Nations, 
Come on, get real. Good evening, you're on the air. Hey, Bill, Tony from Illinois. How you doing? Good. Got an interesting uh, uh, little look from a friend of mine the other day, a Pennsylvania Gazette from October 16th, 1776. Uh-huh. Really nice old paper. And he let me copy a little bit, and uh, Pennsylvania Constitution's in there. And for all those who really want to know about the right to keep and bear arms, Article 13 states that uh, the people have the right to bear arms for the defense of themselves and the state, and as standing armies in the time of peace are dangerous to liberty, they ought not be kept up, and that the military should be kept under the strict subordination to and governed by the civil power. That's right. It's quite an old paper. Well, that's wonderful, because that's exactly what they meant, and uh, that's exactly what they gave us, and it's uh, too bad that all these uh, weirdos can't figure that out. But they're not really Americans, you see, and they're not interested in America, and they're not interested in liberty. They want to see the realization of their socialist dream come true. Well, by the way, before we were so inter uh, rudely interrupted by the Oklahoma City bombing, we were doing a pretty good dissertation there on the... Uh on the New Testament. I think you got to the third part. Are you ever going to do that again? No. Once you, you see, when you start something like that, it has to have continuity. And once you destroy the continuity, you just can't go back and pick it up. Uh, if, in the first place, most people won't even know what the hell I'm talking about without the groundwork of, of the first ones. And I'd have to do reruns. And then uh, it's just, no. <laughs> okay, great. Hey, God bless you and your family. Well, God bless you, too. And thank you for calling. And that's about it, folks. Uh, Veritas rolls off the presses tomorrow, and uh, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm impressed with it. I'm really impressed with it. And um, if I'm really impressed with it, you're going you're gonna to really be beside yourself. Good night, folks, and God bless you all. <laughs>